Uh, you're here for our You Matter Week guest speaker. And we have our student panel of leaders that have organized this, as, long, as well as Ms. Sepetis, our student leadership teacher, who are going to introduce our guest and kind of what the events of You Matter Week are. So again, we're gonna wait just a few more minutes uh, as people start to trickle in. Uh, some things you might notice about this webinar is you do have the option to chat. That chat sh will go to the panelists. Um, and that should be uh, something that you use if you had something specific for us that you would like to remain private. Um, outside of that, you also see a Q&A option. Q&A is where you can ask questions and see each other's questions, and people can click a thumbs up on it if they want that question to rise to the top, and we'll have our guests with us at the end of the presentation for some Q&A. Um, so outside of that, uh, it should be like your typical Zoom meeting, uh, and we'll be able to hopefully address any questions that you might have and give you something that's really positive and motivating uh, as well. So. Uh, as the list starts to slow down a little bit, I'll introduce everybody and then let the students uh, get started. So welcome to the West Bloomfield High School You Matter Week uh, guest speaker presentation. We have Arik Jackson that's going to be joining us here. We have a video um, of some of his motivational speaking directly to West Bloomfield High School, and then we'll have some Q&A at the end. Uh, we also have your student leaders who have organized this project along with Ms. Sepetis, our student leadership teacher. So I will allow them to briefly introduce themselves as well. We'll start with Ms. Sepetis. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for attending today's You Matter program. Our theme this year is on breaking the silence. Don't ever hesitate to reach out for support for your mental health. Um, I wanna thank the administrative team, um, the students on the You Matter committees for today, as well as Lisa Berkey at the Greater West Bloomfield Community Coalition for sponsoring today's event. And I'm going to turn things over to the committee. And I noticed there's some students who are trying to get in to the webinar with a broken link. So I'm going to see what's going on as you all are introducing yourselves. OK, um, I can go next. So hi, I'm Audrey. I am one of the co-chairs for one of our um, You Matter committees. I'm the co-chair for fourth hour, along with Ava Schultz. And um, we are responsible for a lot of the things that you guys have been seeing over this past week and also this coming week. So things like Among Us, um, the You Matter essay and mixed media contest, um, a lot of that is things that we facilitate. And um, I'm really happy to see you all here. And um, Arik has put together a really nice speech for us. So I'm super excited for all of you to see it. Hi, I'm Ava Schultz. I'm the other co-chair of the fourth hour committee with Audrey. Hi everyone, I am Ava Bell. I am one of the co-chairs for the You Matter committee in fifth hour. And we have been like the fifth hour committee in charge of more of like the speakers and some of the stuff going on this week, which have included the TED Talks, which are coming out on Thursday the speaker thing today. And uh, fourth hour also organized a yoga day tomorrow, which was sent to all of you in your emails. Um, we also have this week like mindful days as like our spirit days type thing. So make sure you check that out. Uh, hi, I'm Josh Geller. I'm one of the co-chairs of the fifth hour you matter committee with Ava. And I thank you all for coming to the, the speech today and I hope you guys enjoy it. Ms. Sepetis, I think you're muted. Yep, you're muted, Ms. Sepetis. Thank you. I'm going to send out a revised Zoom link. I know that there are some students who are trying to get in. Let me just share my screen. So while she's sending that link, I just want to thank our student leaders for organizing this and putting it together. Uh, if you've been at West Bloomfield High School or you're familiar with what we've done over the past few years with You Matter. Uh, it's typically been a very large event that really does have a positive impact on our student body and community. And I'm very proud of what our students have put together in a virtual setting to still provide this for you uh, as a school community. So I know we're getting the link out there uh, through social media. So if you know people that are trying to get on and can't have them check Twitter, I'm gonna tweet out the link one more time as well. And then I think Ms. Sepetis might be the one sharing her screen and video. Can you see it? Yeah. 
What's up, West Bloomfield High School? How y'all doing? Listen, Art Jackson here, super excited to be with you. Now, though I'm not with you, I'm with you virtually, I guess that's how we can look at it. Either way, I'm excited, so grateful for this opportunity. Mad shout out to the committee for the You Matter Week. Super excited to be here for You Matter. I love it because of the simple fact that there are a lot of schools that I speak at and this is my first time ever hearing of this type of event, You Matter. Like, I, I, I want to get it put it across my chest, get out there and just be like, yeah, read this, read this, like for real, read this. Like, no, you, you, read this, read this. There you go, you, read this, you, read this, read this. You know, so I'm super excited. Thank you so much for the opportunity. So, Ari Jackson, a little bit of background about myself, born and raised outside of Chicago, single parent home. Dad wasn't in the family to be able to take care of me. So I had to figure things out with my mom, ended up making it to a point. And by the way, I was with my family uh, was basically on welfare. Like literally we got support from the government in order for us to live. And because of all of that, it was such a hard time for me growing up. I grew up around gangs, drugs, all of that fun stuff, but my environment did not dictate who I became. And now here I am, five-time published author, someone who has traveled across this globe as close to as Michigan, where you are, to as far as Malaysia, to be able to empower people and tell them to live their story. And that is why I'm super excited about being here for You Matter Week. And what's very interesting, some of your fellow colleagues, they actually saw me speak at another conference. And when I tell you I turned up at this conference, I turned up. Y'all think I'm playing like literally music was playing. I came out dancing, had everybody else dancing. It was off the charts, had a lot of fun. So I'm super excited to be here with you. Now, before we go any further than any further, because I think I already said that one time. Listen, here's what I want you to understand. I am going to keep it 110% real with you. Yeah, you. Now, I know we can't see each other, but just 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 if you can, if you're hanging with your with just classmates and you're watching this right now, I want you to kind of raise either a finger or a hand if you are sick and tired of fake and phony people. How many of y'all want to put up two hands right now? Like real talk. Like, I'm so sick and tired of fake and phony people, so that's why I go around and I keep it real. I'm gonna say some things you like. I might even say some things you might not like. I might even say something that gets up under your skin and irritates you a little bit, but I need you to understand, I don't wanna waste your time at all. I'm gonna keep it real. So in keeping it real, I'm gonna give you everything that I got. Second thing here, even though we're not together, if you hear me say something and you really feeling it, like it hits the heart, like you're like, man, snap. Like, just give me some snap stuff. You know, you could do it to yourself. You could do it up here. You could do it in your brain. Yeah, I'm giving snaps up right now. But just change the face. Don't do that, all right? And the second thing, if you're really hearing something that, I lo that you love and you're really feeling it, just simply say, yes. Like, I love it. Like, when I get good food, I, <clears throat> yes. When I see somebody, like, turn it up in a dance in the TikTok, Yes. When I see somebody like going hard on stage, yes. When I see my little niece trying to do a TikTok dance, yes. Like, and if you really feel like something that I say, just say yes. Now, as I get into this, I'm just going to share some things very upfront, very blunt. I'm going to pull the cover back on some of the things that I've experienced in my life to share with you. So you really walk away in the le next hour knowing that you truly matter. Let's go ahead and call the thing a thing. 2020 has been straight up disrespectful. I don't have no other way to call it. People are like, it's been sad, it's been hard, it's been horrible, it's been, no, to me, it's been disrespectful. You know, we were hit with the pandemic and it's funny because we're almost coming up on a year of when that happened. And I know for you all, you all are in school virtually over a whole year. That is a lot. That is a lot of time to be away. You know, it's so interesting how we quickly realize how some of the simple things like being able to see somebody at school, being able to catch up with your friends, being able to debut your cutest outfit, being able to do that new hairstyle and, you know, throw your hair or your weave back and forth so people can really like love it. You know what I'm saying? We don't have that luxury anymore. And, you know, I live in California and literally at the time of this taping, they just literally went back to stage one of locking everything down in California. 
So I know 2020 has been a year. I know 2020 has definitely challenged us to the core, whether it was dealing with a pandemic, dealing with racial injustice, dealing with the presidential election and all of that. And listen, I'm not saying like you, you choose what you choose. But at the end of the day, I want you to know that what you're going through right now is not typical. And the thing that's scary about it, just real talk, we learned very quickly this year that the things that we hold dear to, games, proms, graduations, holidays, barbecues, all of that, those things that we thought were for sure certain, there was no certainty. And unfortunately, we've gone through this period where we've lost a lot of people. And when I say lost people, yes, we've lost people physically, but I also want you to understand we have lost people mentally, emotionally, because people have checked out. And that is why I'm here having this conversation with you, because I hope that I get to say something that before you decide to mentally check out, before you decide to mentally check out of your dream and be like, well, it's not happening anyway, so why should I keep on doing it? Before you make that decision to check out of school and be like, well, it doesn't matter because it's not like colleges are going to be open anyway. Before you decide to mentally check out, I want to make sure that I just give you a couple of things. And all I'm going to say is don't be scared. I'm going to say don't be scared. And there's three things that I'm going to point to. Number one, I'm going to talk about don't be scared to connect. Right now, I think, <clears throat> now y'all be real. I know it's a lot of adults out there who are constantly saying to you, well, y'all need to do something different on social media. Y'all need to not be on the phone so much. Y'all need to not be, yeah, 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 and all that fun stuff. Now, like literally life is always about being on the phone in a meeting room or on a Zoom meeting or in a Google classroom in order to make it. And now those people who are harping on it so much are using it just as much. That's the funny thing, but the funniest part about it all is that you would think that we would get more connected that way, but truth of the matter is the connections are getting further. So number one, don't be scared to connect. Number two, don't be scared to be real. And when I say be real, like be real, be real, not be the type of real that you think somebody else might want you to be. How many of y'all know somebody like that? That type of person, like you show up, you're acting like somebody else just to make somebody else like you. By the way, boo, they ain't looking at you. They ain't feeling you. They looking at the next person next to you. And then the third thing we're going to talk about is don't be scared to get too mad. Now, before you take that and run with it, let me explain what it is. Now, with all that being said, I'm going to have a little fun. Like you all are watching this right now. Listen, I invite you, you, to come hang out with me and have fun. I'm getting ready to turn up. I'm probably going to sweat a little bacon grease. You'll see it as we go along, but it's all good. So let's go ahead and instead of saying scared, since we're going to be having fun, instead of saying scared, let's switch up the word a little bit now. All my English teachers who are watching this right now, I need you to understand what I'm about to do is for fun purposes only. I don't want you to think that I am harming what you're teaching in your English class. So please do not look me up. Find me. Come to my house and slash my tires because of a word that I changed. When we say the word scared, a lot of times scared is connected to, like when you say scared, it's like, Ooh, oh my gosh, I'm scared. Like people say that all the time and it has almost like this negative thing connected to it. So because I want to detach the negativity from scared, instead of saying scared, we gonna say scared. Don't be Scared. English teacher, hold on. It's just, it's okay. But real talk, don't be scared. All right. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Listen, I'm going to just share some stuff with you and you're going to be able to walk away with some actionable tips. Like literally, I'm going to give y'all some straight up tips. And these tips are not just something I looked up and I decided to put together. Like these are tips that I actually use in my life. These are things that I know I have coached other successful teens and college students to use. And they have been able to thrive during this hardest time of the year because they have actively used these tips. So I'm going to pass these tips on to you. First things first, don't be scared to connect. You know, when we're connecting via text messages and when we're connecting via uh, sending emojis and this particular saying or sending a whole bunch of gifts or gifs, whatever they call it, and we get to hide behind that. 
And when I say we get to hide behind that, like literally, if we're feeling some type of way, we could just send an LOL and people think that everything is okay. Or we could send like that hug emoji or we could send whatever in order for people to know that we're okay. Or at least have them think that we're okay. During this time, I want you all to understand that the time that you're living in now is not normal. So if it's not normal, why do you think that you have to be okay and everything is just normal? That's the funny thing to me. It's like you're in a football game and you play sports and you get dressed up, you put on your cleats, you grab your jersey, you grab your baseball cap, <laughs> you grab a bat and then you head into the middle of the field and you're like, I'm ready to play, let's go. No, 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 no. You're in a totally different environment. Like what you have right now would be perfect for a baseball field, but bruh, you're about to get knocked out on a football field because number one, you ain't wearing no helmet. Number two, you holding on to a bat. So somebody might be thinking you ready to jump and fight and that's not the case. That's the same thing. See, right now, a lot of us are still trying to process and don't get it twisted. It's not just you. Stop thinking that it's just you. And when I say it's not just you, I'm not saying that it's a selfish thing. But listen, I guarantee you, there's been a point in time when you've had some thoughts. You've, you've looked at certain things and you felt a certain way or you felt some things that you usually don't feel. And you thought to yourself, well, maybe I'm just dealing with that. No. Anybody during this time, I don't care if they're in high school, college, they're a parent, they're administration, they're a, 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 a teacher. I don't care. We are all dealing with this, and this is a whole new field for a lot of us. There is no book that has been published prior to this time that says, we're going to do a pandemic drill, and this is how we're going to do it. No, no. But see, what happens is during this time, because people have not experienced it before, they tend to shut down or they tend to put up this facade like everything is okay. And it amazes me how people will hold in how they're feeling. They'll hide what they're feeling until a point it builds, it builds, it builds, it builds, it builds, it builds. And the next thing you know, something happens that's devastating. And some of y'all may be like, all right, look, you acting like you've been in a pandemic before and like, you know how to deal with this. No, I haven't. But what I do know is being on the receiving end of someone having that explosion. My sister and I, we are best friends. I will take a bullet for her. That is my girl. I, I don't even call her sister. I don't call her Angela, that's her name. I call her baby girl. Like literally, I call her baby girl. If we're in a auditorium somewhere, pre-COVID, and I just say, oh, baby girl, she will turn and find me. Like that, like we are so tight. And then she has three beautiful kids who I love. And, you know, one I'll tell you about shortly. But the thing is, is she was the one person in the world who I just knew everything was cool. My sister and I, we had a place together because when she had her first child, Amar, my nephew, when she had her first child, what ended up happening was bills got kind of tight, this and the other. I was looking for another place. I was like, hey, why don't we just get a place together? You know, I can help you support Amar. And, you know, we could do this thing together. It would be cool to be around with Amar. And because of my career, you know, I was not able, I won't say I wasn't able to have children, but I chose not to have children because I was on the road a lot. So because of that, like, it was a joy to know that I got to be a part of the process of raising my nephew Amar. Like, I became the father figure in his life because, unfortunately, his dad wasn't in the picture 
And because of that, my sister and I, we tight. We have like family dinners, family movie nights. Me and Amar, I literally got a picture of Amar. I am holding him. He's hanging upside down. But the only reason why he's not falling is because he has his hand hooked in my bottom jaw. And like life is good. At the time, I was working downtown Chicago for a law firm. And my sister was working for a medical firm where she was the executive assistant to one of the like head people. I think he was like a vice president or something. My sister loved her job. She loves to get dressed up. She loved to get pretty, wear the pencil skirts, the heels and all that fun stuff. And then sometimes we catch the train together and this and that. everything was good. One day I'm sitting at home, chilling at the kitchen table, just like looking through some stuff as I used to always do. And my sister came in through the back door and as she walks through the back door, I'm like, what's up? And she's like, hey. And I looked up and when I looked up, when I look up at her, I noticed that something is wrong. And I'm like, baby girl, everything okay? You sure? Yeah, I'm good. I'm like, baby girl, for real, for real, are you good? She takes two steps, she stops, she drops her head, and then all of a sudden she starts crying. And I'm like, baby girl, what's going on with you? What's wrong? Talk to me, what's going on? She then tells me that she had just been let go from the job that she loved so much. And it wasn't because of bad performance. It wasn't because of something that she was doing. Unfortunately, that particular company had merged with another company and they had to let her go. My sister was devastated. But when she says that, I'm there, I'm her big brother, I'm gonna take care of her, I'm gonna be there for her. So, I, you know, I hug her up and I cook her dinner and then I'm saying, baby girl, look, here's how it's gonna work. I'll take care of all the bills and everything for the next couple of months. You use this time, regroup, we'll rebuild your resume, we'll get out there. I know somebody would love to have you. You tell, you tell me your boss has already said that he would give you a glowing recommendation, so let's get it. She's like, okay, good. As the days progressed, we were having a good time. She was good. And, and I had a sense that something was, like about a month later, I felt like something was off. And I like, I'd be like, baby girl, are you good? And she's like, no, I'm good. I'm like, okay, cool. And I left it alone. And then we go on, we go on. And my sister, she's like having these days where she goes to hang out with her friends. Her friends are really cool. I know them. And then she would come home all like joyous and happy. And then there would be some nights where she didn't come home. She's like, hey, I'm staying over so-and-so house. And I'm like, okay, cool. You know, I got Amar. We're good. Like I wanted my sister to enjoy her life. So I'm like, go do whatever you need to do. About three months later, I'm sitting in the living room and I'm talking to my boy and I'm just like chilling, talking. And then all of a sudden my sister comes into the room and as she comes into the room, she's crying. And I'm like, baby girl, what's going on? Something was off because this time she was crying even harder. And I'm like, baby girl, talk to me. I tell my boy, I'm like, look, be on standby. I don't know what's going on. Let me call you back. Hang up, baby girl, talk to me. What's going on? What's going on? And she turns around and she starts to walk towards her room. She says nothing to me. And as she gets to the room, I follow her into the room. She sits down on the edge of the bed as tears are just pouring out of her eyes. And then all of a sudden, she starts saying, I, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't believe I did this to you. What? Baby girl, what are you talking about? See, two days before that, someone had came and knocked on our door and it was a lady who handed me this pink slip and I look at it and it's an eviction notice and it says that we have to get out within three days. I go to my sister because during this whole time, these three months, when bills came up, I would give Angela all the money. Hey, pay the rent. Hey, pay the pay the cable bill. Hey, look, take care of this. Take care of that. I had no issues because that's my sister. I trust her with my life. I gave her all my money. When I gave her and showed her this slip, she's like, oh, it's something clerical down in the office. I'll go clean it up. And then we came to this moment. And... I'm like, Angela, what do you mean you can't believe you did this to me? She then goes on to tell me that over the last three months, all the money that I've given her for rent, all of the money that I've given her for the bills haven't been paid. But what she has been doing 
to deal with everything that's going on with her losing her job, she tried crack cocaine for the first time and got hooked. All that money, most of it, went to her newfound habit. Immediately in the moment, I'm like, baby girl, look, we're, we're gonna figure this out. Look, I, I, I got it. We'll figure something out. It's all good. I just need, we just need to get you some help. We just need to get you some help. Promise me, promise me, we're gonna go see a doctor together. Like everything's gonna be good because you can't get hooked on that. And she agrees and everything. And I'm like, okay. The next morning I'm standing in the kitchen and as I'm standing in the kitchen, my mom came over because I'm literally packing things because we have 24 hours to get out of this apartment before the sheriff's office shows up to put all our things out on the street. So because I didn't want to devastate my nephew because I didn't want anybody else to know what was going on, I'm just packing as best I can. And as I'm packing, I, I feel this like something in the pit of my stomach. I can't figure out what it is. And the next thing you know, before I realize it, I shout out, I can't believe she did this to me. I literally, my knees buckle. Thankfully, my mom was there because literally she saw me explode. She came up behind me. She grabbed me. And all I could do was cry. Because literally, someone who I trusted my life with and someone who I thought trusted me did this. Why am I bringing this up? It's twofold. Number one, when you're going through something and you continue to hold it in, hold it in, hold it in, I'm telling you now. You holding it in is either going to cause you to explode or you holding it in is going to push you towards an unhealthy habit or you holding it in is eventually going to hurt somebody you love. My sister and I, our relationship was strained for over a year. Because I didn't know who to trust anymore. And not only is she broken and devastated because like literally in a few days, she goes from us having a house to living in someone's basement with my nephew and her not having a job. And now her relationship with her brother is strained and now she's holding herself back from me because of her guilt. I just wish baby girl would have talked to me. I just wish at some point she would have said, I'm having a hard time and I'm about to lose it. I wish baby girl would have trusted me enough to know that no matter what she said to me, no matter what, I would have been there for her. So my question is, are you right now with everything that's going on with the pandemic and you're trying to make sure like you're not bothering anybody or anything like that? My question is, are you constantly piling stuff up on top of stuff? And if so, when will your explosion happen and who will fall victim to it? Who's going to get hurt? Do you think my sister intentionally tried to help me? No, but because she couldn't deal with that different environment, that different time, she had to turn to something else before she chose to talk to me. Now, we're on great terms now, but literally almost two years of our life were spent rebuilding us. Don't be that person. I'm telling you, don't. So I'm going to say this. Let me give you a couple of tips here. When I say don't be scared to connect, here's tip number one. Talk with someone. Talk with someone. Just get it out. And listen, if it's your best friend, maybe it's your sibling. Maybe it's a, a, an adult that you know. Maybe it's one of your teachers. I don't know. Get out there and talk to someone. Because sometimes just saying it out loud gets it out of our system. And if we don't get it all out of our system, now we have an opportunity to get some help or get some support. 
but you can't do that. People can't support you. People can't be there for you if you're not willing to talk. You got to talk with someone. And listen, you're resourceful. There are lines, if you just need something to be anonymous and you just need to talk with someone anonymously, there are anonymous lines right now. That's tip number one, talk with someone. And when you're talking with that someone, listen, you can guide the conversation. You could either say, look, I'm gonna say this to you. I don't want you to try to give me feedback. I don't want you to try to fix anything. I don't want you to try to fix me. I just need to get this out. Literally, I have people in my life, Jacqueline, she's one of my best friends, like literally with me running three businesses and being accountable for so many people and so many teams, it takes a lot of work. And sometimes I break down and I have nasty breakdowns and it's ugly. And I'm second guessing myself. I'm questioning if I'm good enough. I'm wondering if I'm worthy. And then I have to call my best friend, Jacqueline, and I will literally say to her, look, I don't want you to fix anything. I just need to say this. And I say it, and then when I'm done, she'll ask me, anything else? Sometimes there is, sometimes there isn't. One time I was getting ready to walk on stage at a huge conference in Louisiana. And I mean, it was such a huge conference. They had live bands, they had uh, pyrotechnics and all this fun stuff. And then five minutes before I go on stage, I'm thinking to myself, I'm not good enough to be here. Why did they pick me? And as soon as I realized I was talking to myself like that, I call my friend Jacqueline and say, look, I just need to say this. So tip number one is make sure you talk to someone. Tip number two is this, and I know it's not the popular tip, but I'm just gonna be real. Connect with an adult. And when I say connect with an adult, listen, it doesn't have to be your teacher. It doesn't have to be your principal. Maybe it's your coach. Maybe it's your uncle. I know the trusted adult in my life was my uncle Purcell. And Purcell was someone who, yeah, he hung around the family, but he wasn't around often. But I felt comfortable enough to go to him and just tell him some stuff that I was dealing with. And let me tell you, I'm grateful that I did. Because if I didn't, I promise you, I would not be standing here right now. You have trusted adults in your life. I'm not saying just walk up to anybody and be like, this is what I'm dealing with. No, you know who that person is. The third tip is this, be open to others. If you've been best friends with your best friend since second grade and y'all been braiding each other here for so long and you know, you know this about that person, they know that about your person. When they come to you and say, hey, what's up? Are you good? And you say, yeah, I'm good, but you know you're not, you're not only lying to yourself, you are putting a kink in the friendship. Even if it's to say, no, I'm not good. You wanna talk about it? Not right now. I'd rather you say that to your best friend than, no, I'm good. Because see, now what's happening is you're putting yourself in the corner. You're isolating yourself. You're separating yourself. And let me tell you, we are not meant to live this life alone. It requires people. It requires a community. And that community could be your family. It could be your friends. It could be the team. It could be any organization that you're a part of. But when people come to you, be open to other people. I'm telling you, that's what's going to make the difference. And the last thing I want to say, it's probably also not going to be super fun, but I'm just going to keep it real. When it comes to not being scared to connect, check your social media. And here's what I mean by check your social media. I'm going to ask you this question. Is your social media feeding you or is your social media starving you? Here's what I mean by that. Are the things or the posts that come across your feed, are it things that uplift you? Are it things that are positive? Are it things, or is it, are it? <laughs> is it things that will keep you during this time in a good headspace? Or is it things that are negative? Is it people complaining about other people? Is it people lying about other people? Is it people gossiping about other people? Is it people just saying, whoa, is me, my life is horrible. Please know that if you're constantly watching that, you are starving yourself. 
every day, every single day, we need to be doing something positive or something around positive people that fills us. Because look, I'm telling you, even the most positive of positive people are having a tough time right now. And they're constantly feeding themselves positive thoughts, positive messages, being around positive people. But if you're constantly looking at negative stuff, everything that you look at is going to have a negative spin on it. And I don't care what you say, you look at negative constantly, you're going to be negative at some point. So that's it for number one. Don't be scared to connect. And you have those tips. Let's go to number two, because time is getting away from me. y'all. I'm having a lot of fun right now. Listen, don't be scared to be real. Can you please be real? Like, for real, for real. Please. How many of y'all are sick and tired of faking phony people? Like me straight up, I'm so sick and tired of faking phony people that like literally, I I almost call Instagram Insta lie right now because so many people are lying, lying on Instagram. You know that ain't your car. You know that ain't your boo. You know you're not cool with the rock. You stood next to the plastic version of him at the museum. Stop it. Cut it out, please. Listen, here's what I want you to do. I want you to do you and do you unapologetically. Especially during this time. Listen, if nothing else, you got you. So if you got you, do you and do you unapologetically. Stop apologizing for who you are. If they don't like you, uh, peace. There are people right now who don't like me. Guess what? I don't lose no sleep and I'm probably going to go get me some buffalo chicken wings tonight. Give me some shoestring fries and a milkshake and I'm going to be good while they sitting up there talking about me. Go ahead and talk about me. And for those of you who are super concerned about what everybody else is saying, let me give you a secret. I've learned this. The people that talk about other people are trying to hide the hot mess that they are because they want to take the attention off of them and put it on you. Think about it. Somebody who got an attitude, somebody who are always talking about somebody, doesn't it always come out in the wash that something's going on with them? Yes. Because think about it. If you're happy, if you're joyful, if you're positive, if you're fun, you're not going to go around talking about people. For what? You're too busy living your life. Do you and do you unapologetically. I don't care about the color of your skin. I don't care about where you're from. I don't care about how much money your family has in the bank, how much money they don't have in the bank. I don't care what kind of car y'all got, what kind of house y'all got, where y'all came from. If you're not doing you unapologetically, you are wasting your time trying to be a copy of something else. And I don't know about y'all, I prefer to be the original. Don't dim your light, especially during this time of pandemic, y'all. Especially when it comes to your mentals, don't dim your light. You deserve to shine in the darkest times that we've experienced right now. I don't care if you're popular. I don't care if you're not. Who you should be popular is with you. Now, during these times specifically, I want you to understand this. Let me give you a couple of tips around how to really take care of yourself, how to take care of your mental self, how to take care of your emotional self during this time. Number one, tip number one is know what you need. Know what you need. What do I mean by that? If you're somebody who when you need just a mental break and you need to take a break from everybody else and you just need to sit up and read Harry Potter by yourself and be cool. Know that you need that sometimes. So when they're trying to get you to do other stuff, Zoom parties and stuff like that, but you just need your space, take your space. Your friends, look, yes, take care of your friendship. But if they're your true friend, they're going to understand when you say, hey, I need this alone time. Hey, I need you to be on the phone with me. Hey, I need you to just give me some support. That's your friend. When they are able to give you what it is that you need, that makes them a stronger friend. But they can't be a stronger friend if you don't know what you need. 
And for those of you who are like, well, what I need is, but I don't think any of my friends would give it to me. Well, you know what? Find some new friends. I know it's not going to be easy. I know. I know. It's not like you can go outside and go tomorrow night like that. I know. But what I'm saying is it is important that you know what you need. Because if you don't know what you need, how can somebody rise up to what it is that you need if you don't even know what it is? And let me just go ahead and say this. That's the problem with some relationships nowadays. Why did you treat me a certain way? Because you don't know what you need and you haven't been able to tell that person. Okay, that was a sidebar. Just had to go there. Just had to go there. Second tip is this. Stop trying to act like you have it all together. I'm going to say that again. Stop trying to act like you have it all together. If you are a human being, if you are breathing and you use oxygen to breathe, you're not going to have it all together all the time. Because you're living this thing called life. And life is designed to trip you up. And in your tripping up, sometimes you fall gracefully. Sometimes you will fall flat on your face. But the problem is, is when people try to act like they have it all together. Oh, my life is perfect. My life is grand. I become very weary of that person because immediately I'm thinking, what are you really hiding? Really? Because truth of the matter is, we're all going to have breakdowns in life. There are going to be things that don't go our way. There are going to be people who disappoint us. There are going to be people who break our trust. So we're going to have those moments. So stop acting like you got to have it all together. You're putting way too much stress on yourself. You already had enough stuff to be stressed out about. Why would you add more trying to be perfect? And by the way, to me, my idea of perfect is plastic. You're plastic. Do you and do you unapologetically? Tip number three is this. How do I want to say it? Okay, it ain't no easy way to say it. Some of y'all need to get rid of those toxic people in your life. The reason why you're so stressed out on this all the time, you're on the edge all the time, is because you got toxic people in your life. And for those of you who are sitting there right now acting brand new, I don't have toxic people. I just got people who just don't agree with me all the time. Hello? I mean, like, I'm not saying you have to agree all the time, but if you got, mm, if you got toxic people in your life and you're wondering why you haven't gone as far as you could, it's probably because of the toxic people. Look at it like this. If you hang in with your friends and you have to be looking over your shoulders every five seconds because you think the police might get you, you hang in with toxic people. If you're somebody who generally likes people and you're cool with people, but all of a sudden you get around this group of people and you start noticing that you start gossiping and you start talking about people and it just falls out your mouth so easily when you get around these people you might know some toxic people. I, you know, I'll give you a perfect example of toxic. I grew up, like I said, South Side of Chicago. It was six of us that grew up together. I didn't have dad in the picture. Like I had my uncles and one of my uncles, he was one of the top drug dealers in Chicago. And it's nothing that I'm proud of. But the one thing that I will say is like, he definitely took care of his business. And so because of that, I felt big and bad to hang with my boys. Cause I know if someone went down, my uncle had my back. And so I'm hanging with them and they're getting into drugs and they're getting into gang banging and stuff. And I wouldn't necessarily hang with them around the gang banging situations because of the simple fact that my mom, let me explain my mom. My mom is about five foot four and she calls herself thickness. She's a big girl and she's proud of it. She wears it well. She loves all of it. Here's what you should also know about my mom. My mom grew up, all her siblings were boys. So she had all brothers, had 12 cousins, and uh, all of them tried to fight my mom, and none of them won. I didn't try my mother. As a matter of fact, I tried my mother one time, and the very first time and the last time that I tried my mom, I got my first uppercut in my life. I kid you not. I'm not going to tell y'all that story right now, but... 
real talk. My mom, she's like, why do you tell people that? I'm like, because they need to know the truth, mom. But here's the thing. I'm hanging with my boys. And my mom, single mom, working two jobs, handling a business. I'm taking care of my little sister. And I'm hanging with my boys, you know, oh, yeah, this, that, and the other. And then one day, I had this epiphany while I was in high school. I was like, I think I'm about to go to college. And then I decided to announce that to my boys. I'm like, hey, I'm going to college. My boy Eric, who lived right next door to me, his immediate response was, man, psh, you ain't going to college. I'm not mad that he said it. What I'm mad about is that I actually believed him. And as soon as he said that, I stopped looking at colleges. I start like I stopped pulling out paperwork and everything. A couple of weeks after that, I come home. My mom is in the kitchen. She's washing dishes. My mom is a very religious woman. She was like the minister of music at her church and beautiful voice. Like my mom has one of the most beautiful voices. And her favorite song was Precious Lord. And so I come into the house. When I come into the house, my mom is washing dishes. I hear her singing Precious Lord, but something is different. Something's off this time. And I stop and I hear my mom crying at the sink. And I go to my mom, I'm like, mom, is everything okay? My mom is washing the dishes and she never looks up. And my mom says to me, sometimes I question if I was a good enough mother and if I raised you right. Even to this day, it's hard for me to tell that because of the simple fact I knew what my mom sacrificed. I knew what she gave up in order for me to have. And now all of a sudden she knows I'm hanging with these dudes and now she's feeling like she is a horrible mother. I literally within a day changed my whole tune because now the mission became, oh no, I'm about to make my mom proud. I applied for different colleges. I ended up getting accepted into my college, number one college of choice, which is Columbia College of, of Chicago and um, filled out all the paperwork. It was bad, y'all. My FAFSA, I promise you, if they pull it up now, I'll probably get arrested because I literally just put numbers on there. Somehow I still got a grant, but yeah, like it was bad, right? And... I got my acceptance letter from Columbia College. And when I got it, I give it to my mom. My mom's all excited. She's like, oh, my baby. And then I take that same letter. I fold it up in my back pocket. I put it in. And then I go to my boys, and they all hanging outside. I'm like, hey, I'm going to college. My boy Eric was like, you ain't going to college. Ain't none of us going to college. In that moment, I realized this whole time I've been hanging around toxic people. Here's how you know when you have toxic people in your life. When you say that you're going to do something better for yourself and they either tell you that you can't or you won't. Those are toxic people. When I realized that, let's just say the friendship ended fairly soon after that, I ended up going to college. Now here I am running three businesses. One, a global summit that I run every year for people literally across the globe. And he's still at home living in his mama's basement while I'm here living in my five bedroom, three and a half bad bathroom house. Get rid of the toxic people. Just, just that. And by the way, let me tell you now, when you get rid of the toxic people, you are going to create a fan club. When you do yourself unapologetically, and when you get rid of toxic people, you're going to create the fan club. And the name of this fan club is called The Haters. How many of y'all got haters right now that hate you because they ain't you? Right. So here's the thing. Next time you see a hater, I used to be upset. Why are you hating on me? I don't understand. <laughs> Shut up. And then one day I realized what haters stood for. If you take the word haters and break it down to H A T E. R S. This is what haters stand for. People having attitude towards everyone reaching success. Yeah. So if you don't have some haters, get you some. Because it's those same people who hate on you. Those same people who are trying to hold you back. That will be the very wind in your back as you move forward into your success. All right. That's the tip.
What's another tip? What's another tip? All right. This is a tip for you. When I say do you and do you unapologetically, I like to say something like find your Zen space. And when I say find your Zen space, listen, when you ready to jap out on somebody, when you ready to snap, when you ready to just break down and cry, you don't even understand. When you just look at everything that's going on with this pandemic and how school is playing out right now, you have to find a Zen space. Now, I'm not talking about yoga. And by the way, for those of you who do yoga, I applaud you. I did yoga one time. I was in it for an hour and I cried like a little girl the whole time because I had never known such muscles in my body existed until I did yoga. And that was almost 10 years ago. And I ain't done it since then. So the thing is, when I say find your Zen space, you have to know that there are things that you can do in a healthy manner to help you through a tough space. For me, when I get stressed out, for me, when I feel like the world is caving down, I do one of two things. I'll either one, go outside for a walk and just get out in nature. I'll just get out there, take in a deep breath. I'll enjoy and appreciate the sunset. I'll take my dog, Aria, and we'll go for a walk and she chasing squirrels. And that just makes me laugh because it's like when she gets close to a squirrel, the squirrel turns around, squares off on her, and then she just stands there for 10 minutes looking. I'm like, you gonna do something or what? But it's that thing that puts me in my Zen space. Another thing that I do, I listen to music. I literally have like 30 something playlists and over 2000 songs in my phone. So if at any point in time, I need something to switch my attitude, to change my mode, I listen to that and I might listen to a particular song over and over and over and over again. I have a playlist called Boss. It's that thing where when I feel like I'm not good enough as an entrepreneur or a business owner, like literally I'll turn on that playlist and you know, it's like Boss by Beyonce and just Champion by Kanye. And it's just so many different songs that were remind me of who I am. That's finding my Zen space. What is your Zen space? Is it going outside? Is it being in nature? Is it going to the gym? That's another thing I love to do. Unfortunately, the gyms here in California are closed, but I have a band system and you can always knock out some push-ups. You can always go for a run. There's no excuse. There's other things for all of my creative people out there. Get you a sketch pad and get your life. For all of my poets and authors out there, this is the time, get it on paper. You will be surprised at how much that can have a huge impact on you when you're clear about your Zen space. Look, life is going to happen. Life is neither fair nor unfair. Life is life and it's gonna happen. And it's not about what happens, it's how you react to it. So if you're someone who's blowing up because earlier you decided not to share with other people what you were going through, so now you're all built up, built up, built up, built up, built up, built up, and then all of a sudden now somebody snaps on you and you don't have a Zen space to go to, your life is gonna be a living hell. Because of the simple fact you don't know how to deal with it. That's why if you don't know how to deal with it, get in touch with an adult. Talk to a teacher. Get in touch with your friend. Y'all do something together. But your Zen space, you get to create that. You get to create that happy place. And if you somebody who got like a, a little brother and a little sister who's just terrorizing the house the whole time, maybe it's something outside that you do. Find that Zen space. All right, this is the last one, y'all. We're about to wrap it up. I hope you've been loving it so far. The last thing is don't be scared to get too mad. Now, let me go ahead and clean this up right now. Let me clean this up because some of y'all are going to walk into your, your mom's room and be like, I'm not scared, I'm mad. And then, you know, you flex on mom, she's going to flex back, and it's not going to be a pretty picture. How many of you have ever been mad before? Just, Yeah. I was mad like three times earlier today. <laughs> mad happens. But like I said earlier, it's not what happens to you. It's how you respond or you react to it. And I, if you think about it, when you're mad and you're angry and you're feeling some type of way, you're all tense. You're looking ugly in the face. You can't even write nothing. You can't do nothing. You can't even type. You just, you just jacked up. But I've learned that I can either be mad or I can get too mad. I could... 
be average mad, average mad, meaning somebody upsets me, I'm mean mug and I'm stomping around the house and because I don't feel no better. I go over to somebody else's house and kick their puppy. And by the way, that's just an example. So if you're about to doubt the humane society right now, just go ahead and stop. It's that average man, or I can get to mad. Check it out. Get to M A D. Check it out. Get to making a difference. With everything that's going on in the world right now, people who are out there making a difference are having a huge impact, whether it be through random acts of kindness, whether it be through helping someone else. Look, here's how you're going to be able to get too mad. You're going to have to give 110%. And I'm not saying that 100% is not good enough, but with the times that we're dealing with right now, we got to bump it up a little bit, just a little bit, and give it 110%. I'm not saying it because it sounds good. I'm saying it because this is a principle that I live. Literally a few years ago, I was invited to be a student leadership coach at this event, and I get to the, the training. I'm thinking they're about to whip out pie charts and graphs about how to be a better leader. This girl comes to the front of the room, and she's like, hello. Everybody, I'm like, oh God, shoot me now. Then all of a sudden she's like, so today I'm going to teach you a chair. And the name of this chair is called, oh my God, I love it so much. It's called Baby Shark. Okay. All right. So everybody put your hands up like this. No, for real. Put your hands up like this. Get your hands up. And before I even tell this Baby Shark story, let me just go ahead and tell y'all now that Baby Shark did not just come out a couple of years ago. This incident happened back in 2001 when I did this event and that chair had been around for years before that. So it's been at least 30 plus years that chair has existed. I didn't just make it up all of a sudden, okay? So all of a sudden, as she puts her hand up, I'm like, I'm about to walk about it here. I did not just take time off work to do this. Then all of a sudden it clicked in my head. It was like, all right, you said you were going to give everything 110%. Y'all, I learned that cheer so good. It became the hottest thing walking around campus. Everybody else was doing Baby Shark like this. They were like, Baby Shark. Do, 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 do. No, me and my group, gangster. This was us. Baby Shark. Do, 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 baby Shark. Mama Shark. Daddy. Yeah. I mean, we snapped. We snapped so hard that literally at lunch we would get requests. I ended up learning this chair, loved it so much, took it home. This was during the time that I was living with Angela and I was helping raise Amar. So I taught Amar this chair. We do it all the time. One day we're in a grocery store and Amar, he walks up to me. He's like, I'm in the frozen food section trying to figure out what we're about to eat. Here he comes with his big head itself. He's like, Uncle Arik, let's do baby shark. I'm like, dude, we're standing in the frozen food section. No. And he knew my speech and he was like, oh man. My uncle Ark is scared. I'm like, get over here. We're standing by the frozen pizza. We kicking and screaming. This old lady walks up to the aisle. She turns the aisle. She looks at us and then she backs out and she takes off running. Next thing you know, I hear security aisle eight. And I realize we're in aisle eight. I look at Amara and say, Amara, we're about to go to jail for doing baby shark. His response was, <laughs> no. I was like, bro, it's your fault. It's your fault. <laughs> But we didn't get caught, though, because we ran out. <laughs> a few years after that, Amar and his mom, they moved to Madison, Wisconsin. I ended up getting a position at a law firm in Atlanta. And I'm sitting in my office having just a typical day. The phone rings. I pick it up like I always do. And good afternoon, law offices of Shore Burke. This is Art speaking. How can I help you? Hey, Art, it's your mom. Oh, hey, mom. Ark, I don't know how to say this, but I'm just going to say it straight up. This morning, on his way to school, as Amar was crossing the street, he crossed into traffic and he was hit. The witnesses say that the vehicle hit him so hard that it literally threw his body up in the air and he came down head first into the windshield. And then that person slammed on brakes. And when they did, it threw his body for several yards. All right, they're saying Amara might not ever be able to walk again. Can you come? Y'all, that was my Amara.
the one who I raised like my son, Amar, the one who had dreams of being a football player, Amar, not able to walk again, Amar. I get there and once I get there, He's in the bed and he has so many tubes going in and out of him. He has on this big chest brace. And, and as my mom, I tell my mom, go home. Look, I got this. And as she's walking out, she pulls me close and she says, look, Amar does not respond to pain well. Don't you lose it. I got this, mom. As Amar's lying there in the bed, he doesn't move. He's not responding to me. Then all of a sudden, two o'clock in the morning comes and with it comes the pain. All of a sudden, Amar's lying there. He starts... <laughs> Amar, come on, big man. This is Arik. This is Uncle Arik. You can fight through the pain. I'm here. I'm here. Nothing I'm saying is working. He's still lying there. And he's in pain and there's nothing I can do. And the only thing I could think to say in that moment was, Amar, if you hear me. Baby shark. Doo -doo, doo -doo, baby shark. Amar stops. And he slowly turns his head towards my voice and he opens his eyes for the first time in days. Why am I sharing this with you? Because it's important. If you really want to get out there and make a difference, you got to give 110%. I don't care if it's calling your friend or just really pushing and you know something is wrong with your friend and you're asking even more. No, I know something is wrong with you. Talk to me. Or maybe it's just really like going to an adult and saying, look, I know my friend is dealing with some issues. He won't talk to me. I'm afraid something is going on. Whatever that is. If you're the best friend, live up to it. Become an ally, someone who can support people around you, someone you can look out for, someone you could tell something's off and you can offer something. One of the best gifts that you can give, by the way, that's tip number one, be the best friend and ally. The second tip is this, is listen. We live in a world where so many people are talking right now, but no one is listening. But here you come and you're listening. And listen, I want you to understand that everybody is not going to get that you're listening. And when I say listen, listen fully, be present, put your phone away, turn off the game, give them eye contact, even when they're not giving you eye contact, because it makes a difference. And so many people need their voices heard. Will you just take five minutes to listen? That's giving 110%. Will you be there for that friend? That's giving 110%. Another tip around this, when I say, don't be scared to get too mad, listen, know who has your back. If that means you need to sit down and write out a list of people who you know you trust and you don't trust, or even who's toxic, and those who are toxic, Cross them out. Get them out of your life. Those who you don't trust, ask yourself, why not? Is it something that you feel or something that they're giving off? And then you make that choice. But what you need to identify are those people, your friends, your family members, those adults, those teachers, those, those coaches that you trust. Because I'm telling you, this is not easy and you can't do it by yourself. So stop being Captain Save Everybody and save yourself by getting the support that you need when you need it. You deserve it. And by the way, let me go ahead and say this now. Amar had the most miraculous recovery. And in 2016, he graduated with the class of 2016 and he walked across that stage like nothing ever happened. Who will be the Amar in your life? So that's it, y'all. Number one. Don't be scared to connect. Number two, don't be scared to be real. And above all, number three, don't be scared to get too mad. Get out there and make a difference. My name is Art Jackson. Please follow me on Instagram, hit me up. And y'all, go out here, live your best life, knowing that it's a whole bunch more fun when you have people in your life who have your back and who you trust. My name is Art Jackson.
Peace. All right. Thank you, everybody, uh, for attending. And as promised, we do have Eric here uh, to do a little Q&A session with us. So, Eric, let me introduce myself. I'm Eric Pace, Principal of West Bloomfield High School. Pleasure to meet you. Yeah, good to meet you, too. Uh, great job on that today. We've got um, our student leaders here. And then Mr. Petty's our student leadership teacher. I've got my three-year-old taking a nap right next to me. <laughs> so that's just how we do it in a pandemic here. But uh, so I'll let the students quickly introduce themselves and we'll get through some of the questions students typed in and then uh, we'll go from there. Sweet. Alrighty, so I am Ava Bell and I'm one of the You Matter co-chairs for Fifth Hour Leadership. Um, I'm Josh Geller and I'm also one of the co-chairs for Fifth Hour You Matter. All right, good to see you again. Audrey, co-chair of Fourth Hour You Matter. Hi, I'm Ava Schultz. I'm the other co-chair of the Fourth Hour You Matter Committee. Hi, I'm Jennifer Sapetis. I'm the leadership teacher, and that was amazing. Thank you so much for the speech. Awesome. My name is Ari Jackson. I was the goofy dude that was just up on y'all uh, screen a little bit ago. Ball, goofy dude. Yeah, that's me. Ah. That's perfect. That's perfect. So I'm on my way there. I was telling them my forehead turned into a five head, and I'm it's about time Mr. To Pace, ball. don't tell them that. <laughs> Don't you don't you don't give them warning that you're going in that direction. You just show up one day with all of it gone, like and just say it was a style choice. Like that's what I did. That's you know, my, my mom made fun of me about it, but you know, it's all good. Awesome. Yeah. So we've got um, you should have access uh, to it to a Q and A here right. where students can type in questions and uh, kind of upvote them if they want to see them move up the list. So I'm going to start by asking you one that's kind of come up in various ways. Okay. Um, and basically, it is. Talking about toxic relationships and toxic friendships, how do you deal with that and get out of those situations without causing drama or being called fake? And then how do you recover from that uh, when mm -hmm. you have to cut certain people off in your life? Cool. So first of all, I'm just going to tell you now, anytime that you are cutting things off with a toxic person, it is going to be dramatic and it is going to, they're going to find any defense mechanism to try to make you look bad. See, what toxic people do, they constantly have a mirror, but they're always pointing it at you, but they'll never look at themselves. So here's the thing, I'm gonna ask you this, like, and when I say dramatic, like I'm not saying that they're gonna flip tables and stuff like that and all of that, but the truth of the matter is, if you have someone who's toxic, you, you have to ask yourself this question. Would I rather stay in this toxic friendship that eventually I choose not to get out of and it lasts for one year, two year, three, five, 10 years or, and deal with the pain of like a year, two, five, 10, deal with the pain for that of being in a toxic relationship, knowing that you hate being in it or would you rather deal with the temporary feeling of not feeling good about letting go of a toxic relationship that might take about a week or two for you to deal with? Now, here's the thing, we're human. We don't like it when there's drama. Now, toxic people tend to like drama. Let me go ahead and say that. They're gonna make it super dramatic. They're gonna be like, well, you're not, you're not a good person anyway. And then you can look at them and be like, well, I'm at least gonna sleep peacefully tonight because I'm not dealing with all your drama. Truth of the matter is the drama that you think that you're feeling is really not you. It's coming from them because one of the key traits of seeing a toxic person, they're always blaming other people. They're always putting the focus on somebody else. And then if you do something out of alignment with them, they're going to make you do one of two things. They're either going to force you to prove your loyalty to them. Well, if you really want to be my friend or they're going to turn around and be like, Shh, you're not all that. And they're going to try to belittle you. Let me say this to you straight up. If you have people in your life who belittle you because they can't deal with their own stuff, deal with that, that week of temporary pain. Like, and we, we never want to lose a friend, but at the end of the day, it is a hard question you have to ask yourself because ultimately it is up to you. They didn't put you on a ball and chain to stay in that friendship. And yeah, you may see them at school every single day. I had a, um, Buddy of mine, and let me just go ahead and tell you this. You just think you're dealing with this in high school. I'm quite sure there's adults who can tell you, we deal with this as adults. 
Like literally when I first moved to California, I had somebody and we were super cool. But I noticed every time we would like hang out and together, he was always complaining about something. He was always looking to start a fight. He was he was just like looking for the negative. And if you hang around R. Jackson, it's all about positivity and like I'm a big old goofball. And I started to notice I started dimming my light because his complaints and always talking about something was like overshadowing me. And then it got to a point I was like, you know what, bro? I think it's best, you know, we not be cool. Oh, so you think you're better than me? I'm like, well, you know, ultimately that's you feel what you feel, but I know this isn't working. So you got to be bold. And I know that's a long answer, but I really want you to get like, they don't deserve to take up another day of your life dealing with their toxicity. They don't. Because if you stay in it, at some point, you're going to have to like, look at yourself in the mirror and realize that you stood for it and you didn't walk away. All right, for our next question, we have, when you choose to open up to someone about something that you are going through, who you thought you could trust, but then they start using it against you, what would you suggest that they do? So here's the thing. Number one, um, you know when you can trust somebody. And let's say you do trust them and you share something with you and they turn around and weaponize it against you, that's another form of toxic person. And I choose to look at it like this. Everything is rigged in my favor. So here it is. I just shared something with you that I trusted. You would not tell anybody. You would not do that. And no, you haven't told anybody, but you're turning around and using it against me. Here's how it's rigged in my favor. You've just shown me the type of friend that you are. And because you're someone who's going to use that against me, maybe it's best. It's, it sucks that I trust you and you used it against me. But maybe it's best that we not be friends anymore. And if they pull that whole, well, I'm going to tell somebody what you did if we're not friends anymore. You know what? Real talk, I would rather deal with the consequences of what I might have to face at school versus dealing with somebody who is intentionally holding something over my head, making me miserable every day. Because what's going to happen is they'll use it. And once they see that they have that power over you, all of a sudden, they're going to start having you do things that you don't want to do. They're going to have you involved in things that you don't want to be involved in. But every time you're like, I don't want to do this, their response is going to be, but what? But you know, I know that thing about you, right? You know what? At that point in time, I'm like, you know what? Go ahead and tell people. I, I'll deal with the consequences instead of dealing with you. Because if I got to deal with you one more day, if I got to walk around feeling like you holding something against me, thank you for showing me your car. You're not the true friend that I thought you were that I thought you were. So thank you. And then move on. And by the way, y'all, I know some of this seemed like hardcore, like he is really going for it. But listen, you got to be like that when it comes to toxic people, you know, and there are some people who if they're truly your friend, and you have a conversation with them, and you're like, you know what, the way you approach me, the way you're holding that over my head, like that's, that's like really toxic. And, and that doesn't work. Like, can we change something. If they're a true friend, they will say that they'll make the change and you'll see them take the action to make the change. See, it's two parts. Say it, take action. If they just say it, at that point, you haven't proven anything to me. It's like me going to um, going on Amazon and I buy up a thousand dollars worth of stuff and you know I put it all in my cart and it comes time to pay for it and I just tell them oh I have the thousand dollars but I don't put the credit card number in like you gotta take some action so that's my thought on that these are some good questions by the way y'all these are really good come on bring it bring it what you got um, I will do the next one um so actually I have two the first one is someone would like to know what your Instagram is oh so it is I am Arik, A-R-I-C, Jackson. I am Arik Jackson. And by the way, I'm getting ready to do a revamp. So it's been like about a couple of weeks since I haven't posted, but I just met with my social media team this morning and they told me everything I need to do. Y'all, I don't think I'm going to sleep till like three o'clock in the morning because they were like, get it done or nothing else. So it's at I am A-R-I-C, Jackson. Cool. Okay. Um, and then for those of you that asked, Mr. Pace has put it in the chat. And then another question is um, how do you reach out to people who maybe aren't as willing to 
express their feelings or they joke about it sometimes, but you feel like they might be, they might be being serious. How would you reach out to them or maybe like break the silence and just start talking with them? Got it. So that is an amazing question. And believe it or not, it's easier than you think it is. I think there's this misconception that you got to have these specific questions. You got to do these certain things. You got to stand upside down in front of your locker to be like, I'm here for you. Like, it's not that really what it is, is consistency. I'll say that again. It is consistency. If you ask somebody, hey, you good? And their response is, yeah, I'm good. All right and then you notice that they're still in the space, I would come back maybe a day later, maybe a couple of days later and be like, you good? No, I'm good. No, you acting kind of funny. I'm just not trying to put it out there like that, but yeah, you. it looks like something going on with you. You good? No, I'm just, you know, I just had some Taco Bell the other day and it's been messing with my stomach. I'm good. Okay. A day later, maybe later that afternoon, depending on how serious you're noticing it, you get to be bold with them. And for me, this is what I would do after that third or fourth time being like, you good? Don't just ask one time and then drop it because people will be like, oh, good, they ain't gonna ask me anymore. But when someone keeps coming at you, like, I know something is off. Like, you're not saying it, but I just need you to know that I'm here. That last time when I say get bold, it's literally telling them, look, for the last three, four days, you've been saying you've been good. But truth of the matter is, I know you and I know something is off. So look, here's my thing. I just need you to know that I'm here for you. I care about you. And I just need you to know that I could that you can trust me. Like I'm here. And until I see that something is different, until I see that everything has gotten better for you, I'm gonna let you know every time I see your face, I'm gonna be asking you, are you good? Now, some people may be like, but that's pestering to people. Actually, no. Believe it or not, a lot of students are used to people being inconsistent. They're used to people saying, oh, I got your back on Monday, but you can't find them on Tuesday, or they're no longer interested in you by Thursday because they're dealing with their own stuff. But if you're someone who really wants to reach out and have that person get that their self-expression, like that they need to say something, let them say it. Like get to that point. Here's the other thing that I want to add to add to this. Let's say they do open up to you. How they open up to you is how they open up to you. It doesn't look a certain way. It doesn't feel a certain way. There are some people, how they deal with stress is they'll laugh through it. They'll joke about it. And if they're like, man, I don't know, like I've been like super stressed out, but you know, that Taco Bell got me going. All right, cool, I understand the Taco Bell, but let's talk about the stress, like for real, like, dude, let's talk about it. You have to show consistency because why would someone wanna open up to you the very first time that they meet you when they know on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, you're not gonna be anywhere around. So consistency is the key for that. Anybody? These are some good questions. Like, I am so loving this right now. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. All right, I'll ask the next one. Let's go. Yep. So let's see here. Let's go with what is a useful tip that's one of those kind of, you'll understand it when you get older tips. What's one of those things they need to know now that they're going to appreciate later? To do you unapologetically. Be who you are and be proud of who you are. Everybody ain't going to get it. You're going to get to a point in your life, look, I'm 44 years old. And I'm at this point in my life where people are going to talk about me. They're going to they gonna hate on me. But at the end of the day, they got paying under my bills. At the end of the day, I'm not dating them. They not my boo thing. At the end of the day, they ain't putting no money in my checking account. So I need to make sure that the person I lay down with every night for the rest of my life, which is me, I need to make sure that I'm impressing that person. And sometimes me impressing myself is going to make other people uncomfortable or not like me only because they may be jealous or they're unwilling to be themselves unapologetically. Start that practice now. Everybody is not going to like you. Oprah, one of the most successful women in the world. Everybody don't like Oprah. Everybody, everybody don't like Oprah, but Oprah is living her best life. And I'm just going to tell you now, when you go out there to live your best life, like I said earlier, <clears throat> excuse me, you're going to have haters. 
Just count on it. Just count on it. Just, I, and you know what? I know this seems a little goofy, but I, I, I get excited when new haters show up. Ooh, you shouldn't have said that. Yes! I made you upset because I'm living my best life, boo. And now I'm about to go have me some chicken wings from Kiki's and I'm about to have a good night. And literally, I just did that yesterday. I kid you not. I could walk in my walk in my kitchen, pull out the container. I had me eight chicken wings covered in teriyaki sauce with shoestring fries and some blue cheese sauce. Now I know that just probably just messed half y'all up, but it's like that. Like that is the thing. Get the practice now. What happens is when people wait to be themselves till their 20s or their 30s, they start to have this point of regret, realizing that they should have just been themselves a long time ago. And listen. Every, just just know everybody's not going to like you. But at the end of the day, you need to be loving yourself. Y'all, this is, this is like a talk show. These are some good questions, y'all. Bring it <laughs> on. So kind of on that same topic, um, we've gotten a couple questions about how do you learn or bring back your self-love? Because without it, it can be really hard to care for mm. others. That is an amazing question. So... First of all, when it comes to self-love, that means to honor yourself first. And what I mean by that, if you say to yourself, you know what, I miss doing my art. I'm about to, you know, today at four o'clock, I'm just going to pull out my sketch pad and I'm just going to like sketch whatever comes up for me. Like, I'm just going to do it because I love to do it. And you have somebody who reaches out to you. Hey, what you doing at four o'clock? I'm sketching. No, look, you can do that later. No, like, like, let's let's zoom, hang out, whatever. Da, 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 da. No, at four o'clock, I'm actually that time is for me. Oh, you just bougie. Call it what you will, but that time is for me. Part of the reason why people lose self love for themselves, and I'm saying this from experience, is because we spend so much of our time trying to be somebody that we're not to impress other people. And when you get to a point where like you say, look, and and <laughs> y'all gonna think I'm goof, well, I am goofy, but y'all gonna think something about me, but I don't care. When I'm single and when pandemic isn't happening, when I'm single, I take myself out on dates. I'm like, you know what? I wanna go see this movie. I'm about to get a large tub of popcorn. I might not even finish it. I'm gonna be sitting there by myself. I have literally gone to fancy restaurants and sat at a table by myself and got like this fancy dinner and people are like, is someone coming? Oh, no, <laughs> this is the date right here. That's one thing. Another thing is like, seize every opportunity to acknowledge how amazing you are. Let me, if, if you need some proof in how amazing you are, let me take you back to when you were like one, two years old. You started doing something that you had never done before, walking. And now you're a professional at it. You can walk. Some of y'all got a little fancy walk. Some of y'all walk down the hallways, even at your own house, from like the bathroom to your room. You walk like you're on America's Next Top Model or something. You Tyra Banks or Naomi Campbell. Listen, own it. I used to try to, look, here's the thing. This is what I'm very clear about myself. The family that I grew up in, like all the men in my family were like super macho. This is who we are. And I tried to be like that. And it was stressful. I think that's why I lost my hair. Because I was too busy trying to be like other people. And my hair was like, and we're going to start falling out. And listen, let me tell you, it, felt, it didn't fall out gracefully. So Mr. Pace, be <laughs> thankful that yours is going gracefully. Mine, look, I call myself having a small afro. And I didn't have one bald spot in the middle. It was like two separated bald spots. So like, if you were standing behind me, it looked like somebody was looking at you. Like, that's how bad it was, right? Like, so... But stop laughing so hard, Audrey. Stop laughing so hard. But um, here's the thing. Find those moments. If you're a great artist, own that. Be like, you know, you're a good artist. And do more of that. If you're someone who a friend, like, no matter who meets you, they feel like you are the best person to listen, own that. Everybody is not like that. Start finding those small things about yourself every single day. And look, I'm not saying it like, cause I don't want people to think that I'm just saying stuff. So like literally 
every, I have a journal. I journal my day out and every day. And every morning I say three things that I'm grateful for. And then at the end of the night, I say another three things that I'm grateful for. If you put yourself in that space of gratitude, like literally I look, I went virtual speed dating last week, y'all. I got a number, right? And <laughs> I still got it. I still got it. But the thing is, is like, I was grateful for that because, you know, being single during a pandemic, it's a struggle, you know, because it's not like you could be like, hey, meet me up at McDonald's. No, like you can't do it, you know. But all I'm saying is find those things to be proud of about yourself. Own it. Acknowledge it. Flirt with yourself in the mirror. You know those days when you look good. You know those days when your hair is laying right. You know those days when you did that ponytail thing with your head that can't nobody else do and it was epically flawless? Own it. Own those little baby wins along the way. And the more you own that, the more you're going to start realizing, you know what? I love me. No, I ain't got it together. Look, I don't have it all together. I have a lot of success and that is this biggest myth. Like when you get all this success, all of a sudden your life is gonna to be together. No, it's just gonna be a magnifying glass for the things that aren't working, but I get to face that, I get to deal with that. Look, I've picked up like almost 20 pounds <laughs> during the pandemic, but I look at certain things, I'm like, man, like you could do like a couple of push-ups, and like your arms go big swole, good for you. Own those little things about yourself. Gratitude and take yourself on a date. So. so the next question is someone asked how they can get out of being like the therapist friend and how do they turn away people from without being rude? Mm. So this is going to be tricky. First of all, I want everyone to understand that people treat us one of two ways. They either treat us how we allow them to treat us or they treat us how we train them to treat us. Here's my thing, if someone is coming to me and they're constantly coming to me, especially if it's about the same thing, you know, you can say, you know what, you were talking about that last week and you haven't done anything. So it's probably best that you talk to someone else about that, I'll support you, but I'm in this friendship to be your friend. I'm not in this friendship to be your therapist. I think people are afraid to say things like that. But when you're straight up, you make it clear. Stop sugarcoating stuff like that. Well, I don't want to seem rude. What is rude is you're saying something that you know is not really the truth. So technically you're lying. So that is the ultimate rudeness. To be lying to somebody in their face. Oh, I just love it when you listen to me. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I need to go home and take a nap now. No, be straight up. Tell them what you want out of the friendship. And listen, I understand, especially if you're somebody, it's like a personality type I call supporter. And a supporter is a type of person who they're going to listen. They're always going to be there for you. They're going to make sure that you're taken care of. The con to being a supporter is oftentimes you'll put, your, uh, you'll put other people before you and you'll give, 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 give. And when you have nothing else to give, you try to pull from the end and you have nothing. Say what it is you want in a friendship. And listen, stop jumping in friendships just because people are popular. Stop jumping in friendships just because they are part of a particular group. Stop jumping in friendships because that's your, uh, oh, I'm about to step on some toes right here. Stop jumping in friendships with somebody because you think they're cute and you think this is going to be your side way to get into a relationship with them. Cut it out. Because now you're being manipulative. And listen, I've done it before. I'll be your friend. You need a hug. Like that was me. It was horrible. And I wonder why a lot of our relationships didn't work out because they thought we were being friends and I was trying to marry them. It was not like, you gotta be real. You gotta be real. Here's the thing. When you go into a friendship, just like if you're going into a relationship or for adults, when they get married, there are some boundaries that are set. Put boundaries in place. Stop thinking that because you put boundaries in place, that that means people aren't going to like you. If they can't respect you for your boundaries, then they should not be your friend anyway. You got to put those boundaries in place. Like literally, I, how I look at it when I have new friends, I say, okay, how are we going to create our friendship? 
So we get to say what works for us, what doesn't work, and these are my boundaries. And it doesn't always happen in one conversation. And sometimes it changes over time. But when you set those boundaries, what you're really doing is protecting a strong friendship because neither one of you are stepping on each other's toes without even realizing. All right, I think we have one last question. Bring it on. Yeah, the last question is, how do you get someone that you know doesn't like you to just leave you alone? One, tell them, leave me alone. Stop doing that stuff. Don't talk to me and don't ignore them. And if it gets to a point where they keep messing with you, this is where I say get an adult involved. Because for some knuckleheads, they're not going to get that until you amp it to that level. They're not going to get it. When I was in middle school, and I know that was a long time ago. Don't judge me. Okay. So I was in middle school and there was this dude named Eric. And my name is Arik. So initially, I thought we were going to be cool. But like, he was like, he didn't like me. And I was like, okay, I don't like you. We're cool. And I didn't bother him. But he was always like doing something. It was like he was going out of his way. He was going out of his way to try to upset me. And it got to a point, like I told my friends and stuff like that, did they do anything? No. And then it got to a point, I was like, look, I'm telling an adult at that time, my trusted adult was my Uncle Daryl. And I told Uncle Daryl, and he was like, all right, let's go to the school. I felt like I was like in a mob or something. We're sitting outside in the car and he's like, point him out to me. And I'm like, are you going to kill him? He's like, just point him out to me. So what ended up happening for that particular situation, uh, he came out and I pointed to him. I said, that's Eric. And my uncle, I didn't even realize that one of my uncle's friends, that was his nephew. And so he said, that dude right there? I said, yeah. He was like, pack a lunch? I was like, what? They were like, they call him pack a lunch. I was like, okay. And he was like, hey, come here. And my uncle said, look, you ain't got to like him. He ain't got to like you. But what you will do is respect him. And he'll respect you. I'm very clear if I hadn't gotten an adult involved at that point in time. And so what? I don't care if you're a freshman or a senior in high school. I got that adult involved and then some things happen. Now, if they get to a point where they're doing stuff off the cuff and they're doing stuff off campus grounds and they're like cyberbullying or whatever that is and they're making up anonymous accounts, real talk, I'm going to go to the authorities at that point because I've given you warning. Because if I don't stop you, you're going to continue. And stop thinking that you going to an adult or going to the authorities is you snitching or telling off. It's not that. You are protecting your quality of life. Y'all got enough stuff to deal with in high school, sitting at home on a Zoom, dealing with class, let alone dealing with somebody who's always picking at you for no reason. You already got enough challenges. So challenges that don't need to be there, interrupt them, get that adult involved. And if the adult involved, maybe it's a teacher at a school and things don't change or things escalate, get to the authorities. And I know that seems like so, oh, no, you deserve to enjoy your quality of life. Stop, let pe stop letting people chip away at that. No, y'all already like live your life, live your best life. Oh, that's my answer to that. All right. Well, thank you so much, Eric, for your time and for the presentation today. Um, I know I heard a lot of things that resonate well with me, specifically to being true to my authentic self. So, you know, hopefully the students are taking away a lot as well. Um, great questions, students, and, and great yes. responses. I know we could have gone on for hours on that. You'll see in the chat, we have a couple links there. One is a link. If you want to ask some of these questions we weren't able to get to, or you want to have further conversation, there's a link there on how to make an appointment with your counselor. You can do it right there, and they'll be happy to talk with you. And there's also a Google form for attendance uh, if you want to be able to check in to verify attendance for this event uh, for a variety of reasons or teachers. Make sure uh, you use that second link that Ms. Sapetti's put there to do the Google form to verify your attendance. So again, Ark, thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate you and everything you've given to us. Um, students you. that put this together, thank you for doing this for your peers and for our school community. And we will get the correct link um, for the attendance put in there for you shortly. All right, I'm gonna try again. Here's the link. 
That's also for the contest. Eric was um, generous enough to send us some books. So I will hold on until we have confirmation that the link is not working. Um, Daniel Wisely, if you were on, if you could please um, send that, put the link in the chat. That would I be can cool. promote Dan up to a panelist and he can do it himself. Uh, Mr. Pace, just to let you know, um, according to the last time I checked with uh, UPS, which is how I sent the books, they should be arriving at the school today. Perfect. So, I'm going to be up there tomorrow. Okay. So it's perfect timing. Yeah. There you go. All right. We got confirmation. Thank you so much from Felicia that the link is working. So please make sure you are filling out that form. We've got great books. And then the Greater West Bloomfield um, Community Coalition is also giving away some prizes. And then we have You Matter t-shirts as well that we are giving out. So lots of great stuff. So make sure you are filling out that form. And then uh, before we go, a couple quick things. I wanna reiterate what Ms. Cepetti said about thanking the West Bloomfield Coalition. Uh, the Greater West Bloomfield Community Coalition is generous enough to sponsor these events for us yearly and really do a lot in our community to help promote um, mental health awareness and self-care uh, and provide support and resources for people in our community. So thank you so much to them. And then Arik, if they want more information about you or how to see more that you have to offer, how do they find you? So uh, Instagram is the best way to get in touch with me. Um, if you wanna check out my website is aricspeaks.com, A-R-I-C speaks.com. Um, but yeah, the best way to get in touch with me is through DM. Um, and I can always point you in the direction of different things and also like stay in touch. Cause I'm oftentimes doing particular, uh, giveaways and contests and stuff like that on my Instagram. And according to my social media team, I'm going to be doing a whole bunch more of that. So make sure you get in on that. All right. Perfect. I put both those in the chat for students if they want more information there. All right, well, we can let Art go at this point in time. We'll linger around to make sure everybody gets a chance to sign in. Um, if, you know, have a wonderful vacation. I know we only got a couple days left if we don't get a chance to talk before then. Um, thank you again for attending. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Eric. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming, everyone. Have a great rest of your You Matter week. So I will stay on for a moment just as people are trying to make sure they get their attendance taken care of and the contest entry. So I know um, I'm getting a lot of messages from Mr. Goldstein. Um, you need to make sure you are um, logged into your student Gmail in order to access the form. So everyone, you need to make sure you, yeah, um, logged in and that will enter you in all of the contests. And I wanna again, congratulate um, all the students on the You Matter committees for an amazing job. We've got some great stuff going on still this week. On Wednesday, we have yoga, virtual yoga. And Thursday, what's going on, Josh? You're in charge on Thursday. Thursday, there's a Kahoot from 12.40 to one. And the winners will be getting gift cards. And yeah, a lot of people are signed up and I recommend anyone who has the time should sign up. You probably have over 40, maybe 40 people have signed up for lunchtime Kahoot. So it's gonna be cutthroat out there. If you're signed up for trivia. It looks like we're, um, we still have 50 people on. Oh, Bree, how do you sign up? There is a link in the guide to You Matter for week two that was sent to everybody's student Gmail. And then there is a separate link for the Kahoot as well that was sent out yesterday. So it looks like, let me check the form to see how many people have filled it out. We also have TED Talks coming out on Thursday, so. Look out for those, everyone. All right, we've had 91 people fill out the form so far. Great. Okay. We'll give you guys a couple more minutes to get that form uh, filled out if you haven't done so already. If you are done, um, go ahead and sign off and then we will end the recording and the webinar. So I'm really proud of everybody for participating and also for the committees for organizing the first ever, ever completely virtual You Matter Week.
Yeah, congratulations. Well done.